Hello and happy 2023. Um, just want to take this opportunity before I start the video and wish you all a happy new year. Um, I also want to say um, thank you for everyone that supports me, uh, watching my videos, liking them, commenting. Um, I really do appreciate it. And yes, I wish you a, um, a prosperous, happy 2023. Um, so today I'm at um, RF Dishforth. Um, we'll run the, I think it's uh, the part of the Bomb Stars area that we're here. Um, I've been invited by a friend, Dan. Um, he's got permission to visit for us today. So uh, Dan doesn't have uh, YouTube, so what I'll do is I'll post some links down in the description. What he likes to do is he likes to go around and take pictures of all these types of sites. So yeah, if you're interested in pictures, um, there's links down in the description just down there. So yeah, uh, with that being said, uh, let's have a look around. Yeah, so like I said, we're at uh, RAF Dishworth, um, which is just outside of Thursk, I believe. Um, I've not been here before, so it's nice to be invited along. Um, Permission has been granted by the Airsoft Club that, that runs this part of the site now. So yeah, huge bomb stores. Um, the airfield started construction in around 1935-1936 and was operational from 1937 up until um, 1992 so I was I was wondering I looked on Google Earth and I was wondering are these bomb stores going to be Second World War um, or are they going to be much newer but yeah by looking at the brickwork I believe that this is World War Two and um, so yeah as you can see up here we've got like this framework um, it would have been on a would have been a hoist system would have been some big bombs coming out of here I reckon so what had happened was the ammunition um, cart trolley would drive up this part here, up this track, park outside of the bomb stores, and they would say, "I want ten round, uh, ten bombs of certain, whatever." You know what I mean? You get the picture. And all they do is they'd hoist them out on this uh, rail system up here. See, as I said, this part of the site is now um, used by the airsoft. So that's good, because I suppose if it wasn't in use, it probably would have been knocked down. So it's good to have another, well, it's giving it another purpose, isn't it, this site now. So, yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Actually, I just want to point out, all of the uh, bomb stores have got um, the blast wall all protecting them. All the way around. So yeah, let's move on. And I'm hoping you are actually hearing me because I'm using a wireless microphone today. It's extremely windy here. So we go, we've got some uh, original writing on one of the doors there. Medium range squadron. Don't know what that's about. There's a fair few, few of these uh, stars on this part of the site. What the hell was that? I think the uh, pigeons are, are flying into the door. See, so, yeah, I've not seen the uh, bomb stars like this before. And these are heavy duty of these. Look at the uh, rail system up there again. See, as I said, the uh, bomb trolley would drive up this trackway, park outside, and then they'd load the bombs onto the trolley. We've got some signs there. Um, the safe working tons sign. So I, I can't make it all out uh, what it says, but working tons, pulley, something or other. That would be more modern, I would have thought. And let's take a little walk around the back and see if there's anything around there. See, they do... I'm debating now whether they are actually Second World War. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So 
So moving along to the next one. Looks like we've got three here in total altogether. And there's a bit of this track. Uh, we've got some more original right in there. Station defence equipment, I think that would have originally said. Um, looks like it's been used as a, a dumping ground in there now. So yeah, I've just had a quick look in there and there's no original features. Um, yeah, it does look World War II. But if any of you guys know, let me know down in the comments. Um, it does, doesn't it? It does look World War II. It's just, in some places, the brickwork looks a lot newer. And in others, it doesn't. But I suppose the, the site was operational until 1992, so I mean they would have looked after it. Where some of the sites you go to, they've just been abandoned since, I don't know, the 60s or something. So, But yeah, we'll move on now and see what else we can find. So, moving on to the next um, row of um, the bomb stars. We've got some original writing again. And I think the top part is supposed to say Beverly something equipment. Um, and if you look on this door over here, it's quite hard to see, but it says Beverly servicing flight. Um, I don't know if Beverly's flew from here. And number 38, I think that says up there. So building number 38, possibly, and the Beverly Servicing Flight Equipment Store. Yeah. So in uh, 1940, I think it was 10 Squadron that was based here, and they did um, the nickel raids, or the nickeling raids, which was dropping leaflets over occupied Europe. This is the outer part of the bomb stars. Don't know what that building is over there. I suppose we'll go and have a look. So we're walking up on this building here. This looks different to the rest. You've got your uh, outer blast walls, which the earth's been removed. These would have originally been filled with earth. Yeah, so here we go. As I said, this one's different to the rest. This could have been the uh, fuse um, store. Obviously, the bombs didn't sit in the uh, stars with the fuses already in. They would have been done just before putting on the aircraft to try and make it as safe as possible. And it's also away from the main bomb store, so I think this could actually be the fuse store. But yeah, sadly, nothing original left to see apart from that light in the other room I've just shown you. I feel like I've missed something, but... Yeah, it's empty anyway. There you go, you've got a metre and a half or so across there, like an air cushion.
So yeah, just empty shells now. It's been boarded out for use with the airsoft. But I think we did spot an area of shelter as we was coming in here. So we'll head over to that now. The um, bomb dump, didn't all the um, supply bombs for this airfield, it was also a dump for the other airfields around in the local area as well. It's just like a main bomb dump. Um, I think it was Arya Fleeman um, that was under construction during the war. The aircraft would come in here and, and de bomb and arm. And that's why the site is so big. Yeah, that wind takes your breath away. Ah, oh, this one's flooded. Let's see. Here we've got some, something that's original. The electrics, I think. Although it looks like a little hot water tank. Very small though. See, I partially flooded this one. Got the original door on it. Looks like a little bit of a hatch or an air vent in the centre there, but that's been taken out. Yeah, I, I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's an air raid shelter or some other kind of fuse store. But whatever it was, it was to be kept warm because you've got like a radiator. It's not a radiator, but it's piped around. And by looking at what's left in the room next to it, looks like some sort of heating system. So something had to be kept dry or warm in here. If any of you guys know what this was, well, let me know down in the comments. Um, it helps me out a lot, helps me learn. And because that's all it is when I'm walking around these places, I'm learning just as much as you are. Oh, I nearly forgot them. Nice original switches. Don't work now. But a bit of cleaning up and a bit of grease, they'd be good to go again. Oh, that's deep there. Ugh. Wet feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the other side now. All we've done so far is check out here. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be pretty much the same over there. But we'll try and find some nice original features to show you. And um, we'll see you when we get over there. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking this is one of the old airfield mobile, I don't know, what, what are they, the watch office control tower. Obviously being brought here for use with the airsoft purposes. But I, I can't think of what the bloody name is of these. So you watch another bloody cold one. Today. So well, that thing is there. Uh... Should we have a quick look at that? We're actually. This is a separate land to the airsoft. Bloody runway is there. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they have, haven't they? Tell you what, it wasn't very tall to get in here.
don't know what this is. Someone's been uh, camping out in here. Yes, someone's got a stash in here. Yep. I don't know what this place is. Some sort of shelter. But um, the ceiling height as you're walking in, it's about five and a half foot. So you've got to crouch down to come in here. So it's something that needs, it's to like a protected shelter or something. We've been so low. Yeah, the uh, this is a taxiway just here. So you've got the runways over there. And um, you can see the hangars in the distance. Originally, I think there were six C-type hangars. Um, and I'm not too sure what it's used for now. I think that the Royal Logistic car still have part of the site. So yeah, let me know what the name of this thing is, this truck here please. They're used on airfields. I don't know if it was like a, a temporary air traffic control. Oh, I'm sure that's what it was, something to do with that type of thing anyway. Inside another of the uh, bomb stores. This is more modern, but there's some sort of alarm system there. A little siren and a little amber light. Which looks like it was powered by that. You can turn it on and off. Go there. It looks like those little air raid sirens that you can buy online. Um, yeah, it does look like a little air raid siren. I'll put a, a picture on the screen now of what I'm talking about. Also I've got a boiler in here. Hmm. No original rights on the doors of this one. There we go, you can see that writing a bit better on this one. So it says Beverly Servicing Flight. Obviously after the Second World War, they didn't need this many of the bomb stalls, so they've used it for other things. Storing equipment or, yeah, or we'll storing equipment and stuff like that. different kind of store again I think like on the opposite side of the site it's probably for the fuses I, I don't have the plans for this airfield so I'm not exactly sure what it was for nothing really to see in there
So go into the next section of the stores. They're all very similar. I don't want to record all of them and, and bore you. You get the idea now, I suppose. But yeah, they're all just empty now. Just the same as the rest. But there's a good few of them on this site there. So yeah, the airfield have both British and the Canadians on here. Um, from 1940 to 1943, it was part of Number Four Group Bomber Command, um, and in 1943 onwards, part of Number Six Group. The Canadians, Royal Canadian Air Force, um, and I'm not too sure what they flew from here, to be honest. I think there was Whitley's, um, but yeah, I'm not too sure what else there was. So yeah, p uh, parts of the protector protecting blast wall has been removed so you can cut through, obviously for the airsoft I would have thought. But yeah, it's just a huge bomb dump really. Still nice to get out and document it there. Yeah, I've never been here before. So it was on my radar. But then uh, when Dan messaged me and said he's got permission to come on here and asked me if I wanted to come along, I thought, why not? First video of the year, 2023. So you want to be good to melt detect around here. See what you can find. And in typical Nick fashion, I forgot to do an outro. Um, I was too busy gabbing, talking at the end of the video with my friend that I forgot to do an outro. So I stopped off at another place on the way home um, to do this little outro but anyway as I was coming here I thought um, I might do a little giveaway this time actually um, one of my pin badges that I have um, got one just there so I'm going to do a giveaway of one of those pin badges and also whatever I find with the pin pointer in this wood um, this wood was um, during the second world war the 29th armoured brigade the 11th armoured division was um, billeted down here for a few months before I went over to fight in Europe um, I spent hundreds of pounds um, researching for this location, going through the war diaries, um, aerial photographs, um, yeah, so I, I came here a few months ago and I've pretty much cleared the area with the permission of the landowner, um, so there's, there's still a few, there's loads of things in this wood, this is, this wood I've not melted the whole thing but I've got a couple of holes here that I've um, dug in the past. So uh, I'm just trying to work out how to do the giveaway. Um, but anyway, while I think about that, I'll show you me looking for something to give away for you. So it'll be one of the pin badges and whatever I find in this hole here. So yeah, as I was saying, the um, 29th Armoured Brigade attached to the 11th Armoured Division were based here. Um, 
before I went to fight over in Europe in 1944. Um, I believe they got cut up quite badly in the Battle for Normandy. Um, what I'll do is, while I'm having a little scan around in this hole here, I will show you some footage of them actually in action over in France. Um, I've got a lot of stuff out of this wood so far. Um, I don't have my metal detector with me today, but I've got the fin pointer. So hopefully I'll be able to find something. We've got a hit there. So let's have a quick look, see what this is. Well, it's out, whatever it is. So there we go. We've got a button, looks like a battle dress button. Um, so that'll be going in the giveaway. Um, I won't clean it up, it'll come as like that. It'll have the maker's mark of where it was made. You've got provenance of with the history of it. Um, like I said, 11th Farmer Division, 29th Farmer Brigade. Um, you can look up them, you can Google them and see where they fought. Um, some pretty big battles to be honest. And they were, like I said, based down here before they went over to fight in Europe. Um, and this was their camp area. This is where they did all the vehicle maintenance. Um, yeah, so there's that's that's one button. Let's see if there's anything else. Don't spend too long in here. And I um, saw that one on the surface actually. You've got another button. So that's two buttons. I just I don't know how to do the giveaway to be honest. Anyway, this, this wood is littered with stuff. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So whoever the winner is, you get two buttons and one of my pin badges. But yeah, thank you for watching my video and thank you for everyone that supported me over the years with my channel, leaving comments, leaving likes, you know, sharing my videos. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I think, how are we going to do this giveaway? Um, I suppose every comment that you leave, uh, I mean, every comment that's left, I'll, I'll number them and I'll do the random number generator or something. And it'll pick a number and then whichever number corresponds with the comment i will contact you for your address and i'll send them out so yeah just after a minute of um metal detecting with a pinpointer got a couple of buttons and these normally do clean up really good um as i said 11th farmer division 29th farmer brigade you can google them and you can you can see where they fought um they were they were based down here you know I spent a lot of money getting um, aerial photographs um, and the war diaries to find out where they're training. I mean, they're training all in this area around here. They were doing battles for weeks on end through all these fields, going up to farmhouses and stuff, um, training for going over to Europe. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now. So, yeah, as I was packing up my uh, tripod and to pick my trowel and the uh, pinpointer up, I uh, found another button, so the lucky winner's going to get three of those, and it'd be really good if you'll clean them up and do a bit of research about them, it'll have the maker's mark on there, probably made in Birmingham, um, but yeah, history's everywhere, you just need to look for it, so uh, yeah, thank you once again, and I'll see you all again soon.